today we're going to be talking about your um, film, uh, The Photographic Justice, The Corky Lee Story. And I gotta say, um, I am a I would say I am a documentary buff. I really do love documentaries, especially when they talk about historic events or people that made a change. And this documentary shows many things that Corky Lee did throughout his career and throughout um, his life. What inspired you to bring his story to, um, to the big screen and to our screens at home? Um, well, I met Corky actually randomly, um, but when I met him in five minutes, I knew immediately like he was a guy worth interviewing. I was already going to do like five minute vignettes on people. So Corky just kind of fit in that five minute. Well, he, I, anyway, I was going to do a five minute vignette and he was the five minute vignette I chose. And then it just turned into a much longer piece because he was just so interesting. It was hard to stop filming. OK. And how how long did it take for for the documentary to come to its to its uh full full length like that is now how long does it take because some documentaries uh i recently had an interview that this a documentary took them uh, 10 10 years to 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 make happen how long did did this one take 19 years 19 years wow. 19 years to get it made and then it's been 21 years to now oh wow well why why so long if i may ask i think for any documentarian it's usually funding Right. Like funding is always like the major part to get it finished. But also, you know, Quirky never stopped taking photos and it was really hard to stop documenting him. Okay. So it was a combination of just like, you know, when is enough footage and like, you know, when it does that end. Um, but, yeah, I think it's just generally, you know, I think documentaries do take a little bit of time. And being the fact that you got to meet Quirky, um, is there any fun fact that is not in the in the documentary that you know about him how oh, interesting um i do think that what people like quirky is just very american like he is just through and through a very kind of like american kid from from the queens and um yeah i think we you know when he was a kid he just wanted to join the boy scouts and ride a bicycle um, you know, and his family wasn't wealthy enough for him to have a bicycle or join the Boy Scouts. And so, you know, I think that just he was just such a, a character from, you know, his experience as a childhood that formed and shaped him. Um, and when he saw that, you know, childhood photo of the railroad, I think that whole trajectory just kind of worked in his favor into who into becoming who he became. But, you know, he became very kind of like iconic as an AAPI guy, but he just kind of wanted to initially just be like fit into the rest of the community, which was non AAPI. OK, and I wanted to know, um, a, is there any fun moment from this documentary that is is just a moment that you take to heart every time that you like speak about Corky? I loved, um, there are so many moments that I really love. I love the time meeting with his family. Um, I loved meeting his mother and his siblings. I just loved um, being with him when he did exhibits, like whether I was filming him or not, I would always attend anyway, but just to see the community come together like that, like whenever Quirky Lee had an event, it was, everyone was gonna come. Everyone would show up and support. And then you'd always go out to dinner afterward. Those were, those are kind of like really, very special moments that we'll never get to have again. And I wanted to, to ask uh, a question because there's this, there's this moment in the documentary that I, I, I loved it, that he recreated and you mentioned it, uh, mentioned it uh, before he recreated a moment in history of the railroad tracks, but with um, a full on, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, 146 Asians um, to recreate this picture. And he wanted to change history as well with that picture. Was he like that every time that he just wanted to, you know, make a change and, and let people know that that they are, you know, that no, no matter the ethnicity, we're, we're still Americans? Yeah, I think every day, every photo is very much quirky at work, right? He was an American history major. So everything he know he knew American history. And I think that for him, it was just really about getting people that were otherwise, you know, what he felt omitted from history into the picture. And so that kind of started him on his whole journey of photographic justice. Okay. And wanted to, wanted to know uh, a little bit about Alice, about yourself. 
because I did, did notice, um, at least in, in your credits, uh, I did see that you had, uh, you have like an actress background and this is your, like your directorial debut, debut on a documentary. Is, is there, uh, is there more to this career for uh, for yourself? Like, is there, are you going to continue being a director or um, are you entitling to be an actress or and director? I would just like to say, like, I'm glad you bring this point up because I'm not mm -hmm. an actress. Okay. <laughs> like, it's so much, like, I don't know. I, you know, I've done, I've done things, but I'm not considered, an, I'm not, I don't consider myself an actress per se, but um, somebody put that up on my IMDb and I cannot take it off. For okay. the life of me, it is not coming off and they won't let me, you know what I mean? They said, yeah. like, if it's not inaccurate, they won't take it off. But I didn't put that on there. And I'm very, I was very, you know, it's been on there for a while and I've been trying to take it off for over 10 years. So yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Now, good, good to know. Good to know. I'm very because, observant. <laughs> you know, I good to know because I, you know, I, I saw the credits. I was like, I, I wanted to at least, you know, see what, what, what's her, her take on, <laughs> on this. Yeah. Uh, but is this uh but is this film your first like uh your first film as a director? Yeah, it's my first feature. Okay. I've done a lot of family videos that are I'm directing. <laughs> <laughs> is this something that you will continue to pursue moving forward to continue bringing these type of stories? Um, let it be uh from Asian history or any other type of like uh topic. Um, I think in some way or another, I've always like, you know, one of my things is people, history, culture, and food. So all of the things that I've ever worked on have something to do with those. I I do have another um, documentary that I'm working on that's been like since 2009. So I think that might be my last long format documentary. And then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. But I do like, I, I really love people in history and culture. So I think that some way, some shape or form, I'll be in that, that area. Can you give us a little bit, uh, a little insight of what this documentary is going to be, the one that you're working on? Uh, sure. It's called Still City of the West, and it's about Pueblo, Colorado, as it relates to my family and my history um, in, you know, being Japanese American. But also Colorado is kind of unique during the world, world War II um, and my how like the fa Japanese farmers and my family were affected by that. Um, so it's a kind of a person, it's more of a personal documentary, but uh, Pueblo is a unique city in that it did have a steel mill. And so we were like 40 plus cultures living in the small area. And it's kind of made Pueblo um, still to this day, sort of a unique place to be. Okay, that's really interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward for that. <laughs> is, were there any, jumping back into to Corky, were there any other details that didn't make it to the documentary yeah there were a lot of um things about uh, things about quirky or the, um that didn't make it um i would say that you know some of the history like, that was important to quirky didn't make it like the 1882 exclusion act um which prohibited the chinese from uh coming to the u.s and becoming naturalized citizens um i think the 1965 immigration act right which opened up the doors to um bigger population of of immigrants from asia also europe um but yeah i think that you know there were so many like like things in history that were important to Corky that I originally had in the film that um, didn't make it in the the end, but um, yeah, maybe somewhere or some other they'll get out. Okay, and I wanted to ask because I think that there's a very important moment in the documentary that I think that should be spoken to spoken about when when um, the 2020 situation happened uh, with the virus. Uh, were you still like documenting um, him, even though the lockdown or did you start or did you continue documenting when the lockdown were, you know, that you could be able to go out? The reason why I ask is I wanted to know your experience on how how did it uh, affect you and uh, as well as himself being the fact that Asians were marginalized due to the situation that was going on in that year? Um, so we had a film ready to go for him to see in 2019. Okay. And then he, um, he unfortunately, you know, like then the pandemic hit. So we went back into production. Um, I was locked down like everyone else. And so was Corky. 
um, he started like getting out a little after March, walking around trying to document it. Um, and then we did an interview with him in August of 2020. Um, and so we talked about some of the things that he he had been up to and, you know, follow him around a bit. But yeah, like I think um, it was important for him and you, you couldn't really keep him from documenting what was important. Um, in some ways, you could say that he sacrificed his life doing what he loved, right? Like he was following people. He was trying to document the guardian angels who were trying to help, a, you know, figure out who had uh, attacked a Chinese girl who had gone down into the subways. So, you know, Corky very much followed them at a time when he, you know, people could say that he should have been sheltered in place at his age, but that was never the priority was him. Like he just needed to do what he needed to do. This would be my final question uh, for you today. If you could describe in one word this documentary, what would it be? Um, inclusive. Inclusive. Important. Yes. <laughs> this is amazing, amazing words, I gotta say. So Jennifer, thank you very much for giving us the time to talk about um, photographic justice, the Corky Lee story. And um, yeah, the, the amazing, amazing, phenomenal uh, documentary. And thank you very much for giving us the time.